So um, I've given the, been given the task to discuss uh, the gut microbiome in infants with cow's milk allergy and the implications for treatment. Here are my disclosures again. And this is the outline of the topic. We will see how uh, the gut microbiota relates to the development of immune tolerance. And we will also discuss dysbiosis and cow's milk allergy. And finally, I will briefly touch upon gut microbiota modulation strategies in cow's milk allergy. Even though the sterile womb paradigm is being increasingly challenged, the by far largest microbial exposure will initiate uh, during delivery and will continue uh, in infancy. And the microbial colonization of the mucosal surfaces in the gastrointestinal tract uh, will have um, a large influence also on immune maturation. There are a number of maternal factors that will uh, influence this establishment, and these include uh, microbiota, anti antibodies, and nutrients uh, from the mother. And the transfer uh, of these will uh, actually have an influence on the expansion of the gut innate immune cells, on the development of epithelial cells in the gut, mucus development, and also the expression of antimicrobial peptides and uh, the secretion of antibodies. And this will prevent the translocation of the commensal endogenous microbiota to avoid hyperreactivity uh, to microorganism-derived uh, compounds and ultimately also uh, uh, food antigens. In the otherwise healthy breastfed baby, the microbiome development is quite predictable. The early gut microbiota is abundant in bifidobacteria, and the microbes that characterize these early stages of development are more capable of uh, metabolizing nutrients that are associated with breastfeeding, such as simple uh, carbohydrates. And then the later stages will have a gut microbiota that can help to uh, digest solid foods. Over the first years of life, there's a successive establishment of the gut microbiota, and uh, this continues in infancy. And if you uh, take a look here, in the lower part here, the, here are data from one of our cohorts, you see that the microbiota is heavily, um, um, it's, there, there's a lot of uh, bifidobacteria here in the early gut microbiota. And then uh, over the years, you see that there is successive establishment of uh, new taxa, new bacterial taxa, and there's also an increase uh, in uh, diversity uh, into the school years. Several maternal factors will uh, influence susceptibility to um, um, allergic disease uh, in infancy. And uh, the maternal factors uh, include the allergic phenotype, uh, the colonization of the gut, mode of delivery, and breastfeeding. And there are now a number of studies that have demonstrated dysbiosis in the early life gut microbiota and also reduced diversity in some of these studies to precede the development of sensitization, eczema, food allergy, and uh, also uh, respiratory allergies, and notably asthma, with new data from uh, the child cohort and from the COPSAC cohort. However, a cause-effect relationship has not been established. The micro Biota establishment will parallel the development of both innate and adaptive immune pathways. And in the situation where there's a high biodiversity, this will uh, increase uh, short-chain fatty acid production that have both nutritive and anti-inflammatory effects and also induce uh, the T-regulatory cells. In the opposite uh, uh, situation, with this low biodiversity and dysbiosis, this will uh, enhance IgE production and pro-inflammatory responses. So what about gut microbiome and food sensitization then? Okay, here are data from the child cohort in Canada, a prospective birth cohort, and they compared uh, the gut microbiome uh, at 3 and 12 months of age 
in relation to sensitized. So in this cohort, 12 infants uh, were sensitized to milk, egg or peanut, at 12 months, and they found that uh, enterobacteria at the family level uh, were overrepresented, whereas bacteroidetes at the phylum level were underrepresented in sensitized infants. Again, um, uh, proposing that uh, deviations or variations in the gut microbiota actually precede uh, food sensitization. This is quite a busy slide. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I would like to remind you of the tall like receptors that we believe are uh, ancient gatekeepers in innate immunity. They are expressed on a number of cells, endothelial, epithelial cells, and also on the leukocyte subsets in the blood. And what they do is that they sense uh, conserved uh, structural components of microbes. And Tregs have recently been shown to express uh, TLRs as well. So when these toll-like receptors are activated, they can increase or decrease the suppressor activity of Tregs, and thereby they will provide a very uh, important link between innate and adaptive immunity. It has been demonstrated uh, in, in different cohorts that innate immune response patterns uh, are uh, uh, deviant in allergic disease. So members from uh, Susan Prescott's group have uh, reported increased inflammatory responses to TLR activation uh, before the onset of allergic disease. And these uh, exaggerated uh, responses actually fail to mature into um, um, efficient T helper 1 functions. And it has also been demonstrated that allergic uh, children have immature T regulatory functions. So we hypothesized that this deviant innate immune um, maturation might be dependent on uh, uh, microbial exposures. So this was a nested case control study in a high-risk cohort in Australia where we uh, sampled uh, uh, atopic mothers uh, and uh, followed their infants for the first two and a half, half uh, years of life. So we sampled stool in the third trimester uh, in pregnancy uh, from the mothers, and then we sampled stool from the infants at one week, one, and 12 months of age. And then we clinically assessed them at repeated intervals until two, at two and a half years of age. And then we compared the gut microbiome development in uh, children that were sensitized to milk, egg, or peanut, and also had eczema and uh, uh, compare that to the healthy controls, that is, uh, children that were not sensitized, had no eczema, nor any other allergic manifestations. We also uh, draw blood at six months of age, and we um, isolated mononuclear cells and cultured them with specific microbial ligands for TLR2, which is the principal receptor for gram-positive bacteria, and TLR4, which is the principal receptor for gram-negative bacteria. We did find that the mothers had a lower alpha diversity of the main bacterium uh, phylum bacteroidetes in their stool if their infants developed uh, atopic eczema and food sensitization. And we also found a reduced abundance of enterobacteria at the family level uh, in infants uh, who developed uh, atopic eczema. And this related to, uh, uh, there was an inverse relationship between enterobacteria and uh, inflammatory responses following uh, TLR activation. So this suggests that when there's reduced abundance uh, of potentially immune modulatory uh, bacteria, this may influence uh, the development of innate immune response patterns. So what about the microbiome in cow's milk allergy then? Well, here are some data from the COFOR study that enrolled 226 children in infancy. All of the enrolled children had cow's milk allergy, IgE-mediated uh, cow's milk allergy, and stool was sampled uh, at entry. They were followed until eight years of age, and at that age, milk allergy had resolved in uh, about a little bit more than half of the children. And you can see here in the, the, the PCA uh, plot that uh, there are um, 
are trends uh, to differences uh, uh, in microbiome composition uh, uh, in relation to resolution of cow's milk allergy or persistent cow's milk allergy. They could also um, report a quite distinct gut microbiome composition uh, to be associated with milk allergy resolution. And if you see here, taxa within the Clostridia class and the Firmicutus phylum were enriched in children sampled at age three to six months uh, um, in comparison with those that had a persistent milk allergy by eight years of age. Again, demonstrating that microbial patterns associates with tolerance development versus persistence of milk allergy. However, the, re the resolution of, of this analysis uh, was only uh, at the final phylum level and at the class level. And then a more recent study, um, there have been efforts to try to, to get a higher uh, resolution. In this study, uh, uh, the uh, authors uh, compared uh, children with eczema and confirmed uh, food allergy versus eczema and no food allergy and reported under-representation of uh, specific taxa within bifidobacteria and also the column uh, presnitsi and uh, uh, musinophilia. We also uh, have an interest in Ficali bacterium, and uh, again, in one of our cohorts, we actually do see that the relative abundance of Ficali bacterium correlates with the T cell regula mar regulatory markers ILT and also FOXP3 in allergic children. So we are looking uh, a little bit deeper into this. So, the postnatal exposures that will uh, promote tolerance uh, development include colonization of the gut and the introduction of food antigens, and also, obviously, human milk that is plentiful in a number of bioactive factors with immune modulating capacity. So the aim of interventions to, uh, um, to treat uh, food allergy and cow's milk allergy would then be to try to induce a tolerogenic environment in the gut and also to promote uh, tolerance acquisition. And this might be uh, uh, done by uh, dietary uh, interventions such as fiber, uh, adding pre, pro, and symbiotics to infant formula, uh, by uh, adding lactose uh, to, influence, to infant formula. Human milk is plentiful in, in lactose that have many um, um, bioactive uh, activities. And also by the addition of human milk uh, oligosaccharides, it would be highly interesting to, to um, examine the role of uh, HMOs in this context. And obviously, uh, these interventions uh, would uh, uh, have an effect on mucus production. Uh, they might reinforce the gut barrier integrity, stimulate the production of short-chain fatty acids, stimulate or dampen innate immune response patterns, induce T regulatory cells, and then dampen uh, the reactive clones. So um, I would like to draw your attention to two uh, recent reviews on this topic. The first one, uh, that uh, discusses uh, these uh, dietary interventions, and the second one that looks into the more uh, mechanistic aspects of this. So, finally, I hope I have been uh, able to convince you that gut microbiota variation is implicated in cow's milk allergy development, and that microbial signatures have been associated with tolerance acquisition. However, at at this stage, metagenomic studies are warranted for higher resolution and also for the understanding of the functional relevance. Pre, pro, and symbiotics may influence gut microbiota composition in cow's milk allergy, and it, again, would be highly interesting to uh, examine the role of HMOs in uh, treatment of cow's milk allergy. So I'd like to uh, thank uh, members of my lab and senior collaborators at UMI University, at the University of Western Australia, and also at SciLife Lab and Karolinska Institute. Thank you. <laughs>